Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, you're listening to Pods of the Multiverse Season 4. We're playing 5th Edition D&D, and I'm Jimmy, the DM for our game in Eberron. Joining me are three of my best friends. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm playing the Green Warden named the Green Warden, who is on a quest to follow of homage. My name is Jeppy. I am playing Alfonso Carlucci Ropetella, who, as it turned out, ended up on the stat block for anything with beaks and claws under favored enemy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Scala, and I play Istvan of Clan Gunvald, and I am the source of your next Owlbear Rogue's tragic backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in once again. Here is episode three. Last time. Isvan and Alfonso, now joined by the Green Warden, wandered the ruins of an ancient giant city, unable to find their way back to camp due to the Traveler's Curse. Between encounters with various fearsome creatures, they conversed with Rizian, Gallant, and Professor Croswell, who, despite the Warden's protestations, insisted he is a construct built by ancient giants and is likely very valuable to collectors back home. After wandering around in the ruins for most of the day, the expedition's mantis folk guide, seemingly impervious to the Traveler's Curse, gathered up the party and swiftly led everyone back to camp. Disagreement over the Green Warden and the nature of humanity continued late into the night. In the morning, Yuli and Orlot, the expedition's hired treasure hunters, attempted to capture Warden on the orders of Rizian. Guided by the light of the draconic constellation of Bahamut, the Green Warden fled into the jungle, followed closely by the trio of treasure hunters, Istvan and Alfonso. So, here you are. In this very deep, dark jungle, you have these massive leaves all around you, vines as thick as your arms hanging, there's trees with trunks wider than you've ever seen in your life, and roots are snaking and sticking out of the ground taller than you, almost the size of entire other trees. There's this thick underbrush that makes it really hard to move around, and moss all over the place. This same jungle didn't seem quite so foreboding the past few days, as uh, Clacky, the guide, led you through these naturally occurring trails and clearings, but now you're just in the thick of it. So, you, Istvan and Alfonso, enter this jungle shortly after the warden fled into here and the treasure hunters right after him. So, what would you like to do? Do we see any of them? So, you two are together, and I'm gonna have you roll perception, with disadvantage, please. That's only a seven. It's a six. Jeez. (laughs) You guys are dead. Had to give us disadvantage. That's on you. Disadvantage hurts. Okay. Warden, what are you doing? I'm moving. Trying to keep in the same direction that I saw the star in the sky. Okay. So you're not trying to be stealthy. Remind me, do I know that they're behind me? Do I know that people are following me still? You can assume. They were pretty insistent on trying to capture you. Okay. Then I think my priority is moving and not stealthing. Okay. Let's see. Let me roll for everyone else. Isvan and Alfonso, with those really horrible perception rolls, you still see this massive form of Warden tramping through the jungle because that passive stealth with disadvantage puts you at a four. (laughs) Cool. So, yeah. So there's six and seven. They see you immediately. Big pile of rocks just trudging through this jungle. There is a new friend. Let's go for him now. I'm going to start running towards Warden. With all this brush and foliage... I don't know if this is the best way to get about. And I'd like to, if I can, engage in some Tarzan shit here and, like, climb up on some vines and swing from branch to branch, if you'll allow that. Yeah, absolutely. That's in the category of monk shit. Okay. Roll acrobatics to kick that off. That's a 14. Yeah, a 14 will get you up into a tree, and you can re-roll your perception check flat from up there. Cool. That's only a 10. Okay, but even on a 10, you can now see this trio of treasure hunters who are also not trying to be stealthy, making their way through the jungle a short ways away. They don't appear to have seen you yet. Okay. Well, Alfonso might blow it by shouting up, What do you see from up there? It hit it that way! Come on, let's hurry! I'll head in the direction that Istvan pointed. And if I can still see Warden, I might shout, Signore Warden, we're coming to help you! Yeah, from up there, you can see them, and with all this noise, and with the warden's huge form, as soon as you start making noise, they catch on, and they're making their way towards you now. So, your options here are engage them, or try to hide, or try to run away. Hmm. From what we can tell, it seems like it's just the three of them. Yes. 
Okay. Did I hear Alfonso shout out? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> then I will try and find some sort of higher ground or terrain that I can sort of get above these pursuers. They see you, and they're making their way towards you at half speed. Mm -hmm. So roll survival. Cool. See if you can find somewhere to climb up on. That is a 13. Yeah, on a 13, you see just a huge fallen tree, and you think that you could climb up on top of this huge fallen tree trunk and get a good vantage point from atop the roots at the bottom of the tree. Cool. I'm going to try and climb up there and wait for these pursuers and my companions. Okay. Make an athletics check to climb up there. Sure thing. 25. Yeah, you just dig your hands right into this bark oh, yeah, and do. just <laughs> climb right up this bark wall of the trunk. I stick my great sword into the ground and wait stoically. You should probably roll stealth if you're trying not to be noticed from up there. I'm not trying to hide. Okay. I'm simply trying to begin this scenario from some sort of high vantage point. Okay. So then from that vantage point, you can roll flat perception as well. Cool. 18. Okay. Yeah. On an 18, you can definitely see them coming towards you. With that high of a roll, you can also perceive that they saw you do everything you just did. Hell yeah. And also with that high of a roll, you can see that if they noticed Isfan and Alfonso, they're not pursuing. But you can't tell if they actually saw them or not. Okay, cool. All right. Isfan and Alfonso, what are you doing? Continuing to run in the direction. Yeah, I keep going towards Warden. And I suppose if I come upon him before whatever encounter starts... These three treasure hunters are kind of tramping their way towards you very slowly. You can, from up in the trees, make your way over near enough to where Warden is. I talked with Alfonso, and I'm willing to fight if that's what you think is necessary. But that star is calling us another way. I don't know if we need to resort to bloodshed here. As they say that, I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Mm -hmm. Allies, thank you for coming to my aid. But these wicked souls will not stop. If we are to continue our course together, it shall not be out of flight of fear. These wicked souls are still Onatar's children. I will not kill them, and I beseech you to do the same. And I mean not to. Very well. They're not the only ones of Onatar's children who have lost their way. And I will wait for this conflict to begin. I am walking in their direction. If they're walking slow enough, would I reach them before they hit Warden? I'm running in their direction, rather. Where were you before? I was behind them, and Istvan went up into the trees, and I just stayed on the ground, running in the direction that Istvan pointed. Oh, so you're further away from Istvan and the Warden than they are. Either way, I would like everyone to roll one more perception check, and if anyone's trying to be stealthy, roll that too. There's gotta be something here we're missing. There's... <laughs> something is up. 12. So the perception is 15, okay. and I think Istvan will try to hide up in this tree that they're in so that's a 19 oh, wait. stealth from them oh my god i think it was that's an eight perception and okay. with disadvantage i'm not even shitting a nat 20 and a nat one. Oh my god <laughs> oh. yeah <laughs> nice that's, that's like uh that's some clerk ass shit right there you find the perfect hiding spot and you're confident that you can't be seen and then just a huge piece of bark peels off to leave you in plain sight and crashes down making a loud noise <laughs> absolutely i love it I holy love shit it. Yes. damn yeah Okay, so the three of you can definitely see these treasure hunters clearly, and they are making their way towards Warden, and there's no doubt that they can see Warden and are making their way in that direction. But, Isvan, you feel like you're reasonably well hidden. Okay, cool. Go ahead and roll initiative. Initiative, I got a 17. Initiative, I got a 10. I got a 15. Okay, these rolls are ridiculous. <laughs> Is that a good or a bad thing? Depends on... Yeah, whose perspective. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Jimmy Dice, who knows? They were pretty high for Jimmy Dice. That's mostly what was so ridiculous about them. Cool. All right. Rizian is up first at initiative 22, and he's going to shout out to Yulian Orlat. What are you doing? Capture them. He can only move 15. He's going to make his way probably about like 30 feet away from where you are, Warden. Okay. Next up is Orlat. Orlat's also moving along with Rizian, and he moves to the same spot, and then we have Warden. 
I will give you one chance to do the honorable thing. And what would that be? Flee back to your camp (laughs) and pursue me no more. And why would we do that? Very well. You think me to be a monster, but I know your intent. Does it look like they uh, are showing any sign of changing their plans at all? No. They don't seem like they're going to turn and leave. Andy, we are doing combat. If that has not been made clear. I'm going to jump them. Well, hold on, though. What? Oh. Roll an insight check. Okay. It's another nat 20. For a total of 25. Yeah, on 25, just from their body language, you can tell. It doesn't really look like they're trying to hurt you. It looks like they're maybe here to negotiate. Yep. Maybe just bring you quietly. Cool. They don't even have weapons drawn right now. Mm. They were just looking for you. I see. I say again, and for the last time, I will not be some thing to be brought and bartered and used. I am on a mission. Stars. What is he talking about? I don't know. I'm going to hold my action. Okay. I see that they're still trying to move towards me. I'm going to hold an action of defending myself if they are to continue trying to hostily capture me. Got it. That's Alfonso. All right. Am I close? Where am I now? What's your movement speed? 25. So there's the two that just walked up to where almost where Warden is, and then there's one lagging behind who hasn't had their turn yet. You're probably about 15 feet behind that one. I'll go my full movement speed and get in between both. It's difficult terrain, so you can only move half right now. Okay. I will move 15 or whatever. 12.5 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I think it rounds down, right? Just 12. Cool. You can move up right behind this person if you want to. Yeah, I'm just going to chill right in their ear. Signore Rizian, why can you not simply let him go? The dwarf right in front of you kind of jumps. They didn't see you there. And wheels around <laughs> and goes, what? don't sneak up on me like that. I am the, the height of a blade of grass, probably. <laughs> <laughs> let him go. That's hardly any of your business. Why? You're trying to take him for yourself? Quite the opposite. And I agree, it is not my business. But it is the humane business, yeah? You understand? He's doing the right thing? You're not doing the right thing. Why are you not doing the right thing? Humane. (laughs) This is not a human. Ah, and that's all humane acts. Only apply to humans, eh? Do you not help wounded animals? Well, I don't help a machine the same way I help a wounded animal. And what of Klaki, your guy that has helped you along the way? That is not human. Would you not care for the Klaki? I'm not human. What is what is this conversation? <laughs> Your logic falls apart, signore. Man, this campaign <laughs> is on the game three, and the entire time it has just been a moral quandary of what is humanity. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Alright, are you gonna do anything this turn, Alfonso, or are you just arguing? Well, I'm trying to get to a place where I can roll persuasion to get them to leave. Go ahead and roll persuasion with the conversation you just had. With disadvantage. <laughs> no, just flat. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's a nat 20, which is a 25. Holy shit! What are these rolls? I actually rolls? didn't God want it to damn. be that. I really wanted to do some combat because I'm itching for combat. All right. <laughs> what what goes with that great persuasion roll? So, Signore Rizian, if you must admit to yourself that you will help certain people, not human, then why can you not help this one by letting him go? Like I said, this is not a person, but I'll give you a head start. Oh! Start running. Oh! Oh! I did wear my nice shoes for this excursion. Let me think for a moment. Which direction shall I go? I think I'll go down. And I'm going to smash into the ground and cast Thunderwave on everybody around me if it'll hit them. Oh, jeez. Hell yeah! Okay. Ah. Go for it. It's a con save for whoever it hits. What's the range on that? 15 foot cone? Cube. 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 Excuse me. Cube. So 15, it's just going to hit Yuli. And that is... And for flavor, as I hit the ground and thunder moves all around me, I will also immediately transition into my infiltrator armor. Hell yeah. You'll know me Stark shit right here. Right. All right. Well, Yuli rolled a 19. Okay. Damn. Yuli's not pushed, but will take five thunder damage. What are you doing? You cannot be reasoned. We do the right thing. The right thing is attacking. Did you not tell me to run? I don't run when it concerns helping others. And that is Alfonso's turn. Yuli is up. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Go on right near me. Yuli 
How close did we say you were? You were in melee distance, right? 2.5 feet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so Yuli is going to draw a sword, brandish it towards you, lock eyes with you, as if to say, are you sure this is what we're doing? Bien Very well, then. Ooh, that's a crit fail. Damn, Jimmy Dice. There's the Jimmy Dice. Yuli swings their sword at you and doesn't even really come close. You can kind of tell they weren't really intending to hurt you and then backs up a step. Not enough to provoke an attack of opportunity. And that is Istvan. Okay. I assume I am fewer than 40 feet up in the air. What's your climbing speed? It's half my movement speed, so it would be 15 or 17. Yeah, I would say that you're, you're probably... 30. Mostly this is just for the purposes I drop down, I use my reaction to slow fall so I take no damage. I drop down right behind, I guess, Rizian and Orlot? Yeah. Okay. While my inner flame burns, this soul shall not serve House Kundarak. And I guess we've started fighting, so um, <laughs> fighting it is. I pull my Warhammer off my back. And I'm going to start with an attack against Rizian. Okay. So that's a 22 to hit. That hits. Okay. I'm going to spend a key point. Could Rizian make me a con save as I attempt to stun him? Hell yeah. That's an 11. Okay. He fails. He's stunned. Hell yeah. And actually, I think as I do this, I drop my hammer down low and you see... This red orange aura form around Istvan, and they mutter under their breath, Sacred Hammer Technique, Soul Quenching Strike! And they slam the hammer into Rizian, and you can see this reverberating energy sends this shockwave of hot and cold through their body so they can't move. Fucking Dragon Ball Z ass shit, hell yeah. Uh, you know, a monk is gonna monk. So that was my first attack. And since they're stunned, I'm now going to swing at Orlot. Same 22 to hit. Okay. Oh, I forgot to actually do damage. Yeah, I was wondering there. I was so into my, like, I'm a monk, I'm going to do stunning strike. <laughs> Rizian takes seven points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> and Orlot takes 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Ooh. And I'm going to use my bonus action to just make an unarmed strike and elbow them in the jaw. Um, so that may miss. That's only a 15 to hit. Orlot? Yes. That misses Orlot. Okay. So I swing my elbow, but does not connect. That's my turn. Wow. What a turn. All right. Uh, we're back to the top with Rizian. He's... Stunned. Yeah. Incapacitated. Right? Which just means, no, you can't do anything. He's Correct. stunned. He passes his okay. turn. Yeah, it's just a full pass. There's, there's nothing that can happen. Okay, so then we're on to Orlot, who is going to draw his huge battle axe, and he's probably going to miss with an eight against Istvan. That will miss. That's what I thought. Okay, and I believe that's Warden. Warden, on top of this massive tree, the scene below you has devolved into fighting. Are there two of them that I can get in between? Yeah, you could probably get in between Rizian and Orlot. Cool. Okay, I start my turn by lifting the sword out of this bark. Very well. And I will Scorching Whirl. Using my bonus action, I dash and appear in a flaming swirl of air and energy between them, and they both need to make a dexterity saving throw, please. I was engaged with them. Do I need to make this save as well? It's within five feet of where I arrive. Okay, so you could probably position it so as to not hit. So you could be on the other side of those two. Yeah, okay. For sure. All right. Uh, Rizian got a dirty 20. Okay. Rizian automatically fails. Uh, Rizian yeah, automatically yes. fails, and Orlok got an 11. Okay, they both, both fail. fail. And they both take, ho ho, seven fire damage. Nice. And then I am going to use my action to try and shove Rizian onto the ground. I want to try and knock him over. Seems easy to do right now. Yeah. Is that an auto fail from him while he's stunned or do I? I think it's an auto fail. Cool. I knock him prone. Yeah. He falls over and still just kind of there shaking, not able to do anything. I put one of my massive stone feet on his chest and look to his two underlings. We mean not to continue this conflict. Drop your weapons and flee. Yeah, they don't drop their weapons, but they do 
take a few steps back. Are you trying to hold Rizian there? I mean, I'm trying to intimidate as many people as possible, and because Rizian is stunned, I'm just going to hold him down. All right, roll intimidation. Cool. That is going to be a 15. Okay, yeah, on a 15, they didn't know that you were capable of that. They are terrified, and they lower their weapons without dropping them, take a few steps back, and then turn to each other. Orlot says, what about Rizian? And Yuli says, can, uh, uh, can we take him? Asking you, Warden. Warden, in this moment, contemplates the consequences that might unfold because of these actions, but does take his foot off of Rizian and steps back. Thank, thank you. Yuli and Orlot walk up and take Rizian under the arms and drag him away. And as they're dragging him, he says, this isn't over. You win this round. Hell yeah. And they disappear into the jungle. <laughs> and we end initiative. You'll love it. I do a Fortnite dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> As they're leaving, I want to call back to them. If you were wise, you'd leave it at this. Let it be done. And learn the sense of humanity while you're at it. You get no response. Alfonso's new catchphrase. So, still in the jungle. They're nowhere to be found. My new friends, thank you for pursuing. I was hoping it would not have had to come to violence, but I have seen people like them before. It doesn't take a giant to wear the face of men like that. So now the three of you are reunited together here in the jungle, still moving very slowly really not comfortable. It's dark and it's humid. But after wandering around for a little while, you see some daylight up ahead. A little bit of sunlight as though maybe there's a clearing or just a thinner area of trees in that direction. If I can while we're traveling, I'd like to stay in the canopy so I can at least have a view of, if possible, the star that we're following. Okay. Give me an acrobatics check. Sure. 21. Nice. Okay. On a 21, you can absolutely get back up into the tree really easily but as you get up there you realize that this canopy is really just incredibly huge it's probably hundreds of feet up to open sky okay and so you absolutely will not be able to see the sky while you're in the trees like this very good. that's fucking cool and scary Istvan would still try but upon realizing it's not viable they would drop back down to the ground yeah and on a 21 you go pretty high up there before you kind of realize this, and then come back down gracefully and easily. <sighs> the wondrous curse seems to apply in all directions. So, what are you doing? I guess we head towards this light that we see? Yeah. Yeah, this clearing. Mr. Warden, can you catch this star in the sky that you've been following? Mm, catch. Were it so easy to hold in one's hand, mm, perhaps... Excuse me, I meant catch sight of... See, can you see the star? <laughs> I see. Not since we have wandered into this darkness. But there, look. A clearing, perhaps. And I try and lead us towards this opening we see. Great. So you move towards it. Soon enough, you do make your way to an area where you can definitely see a lot more sunlight coming through the trees in front of you. still pretty dark up above, but you can see there's absolutely a clearing ahead. And as you emerge from these trees, you see a deep gorge a little ways ahead of you with a raging river running through it. It's probably about 120 feet across and very, very deep, big drop off. And spanning this gorge is an old rickety rope bridge. Hell yeah. Yes. So a long, narrow rope bridge with rotting wooden slats spans the gorge and looks to be about 120 feet. Alfonso's going to go ahead and pop out of his armor. Okay. It appears old. How wide does this bridge seem? Could accommodate single file. Mm. Give me a perception check unless you feel like you have something more suited to rope bridges. Yeah, no, I'm just going to try and look around and see if there's anything that sticks out. <coughs> but that's only in a layout yeah, on an 11, this is a rope bridge with wooden slats. You got a rope on each side that sort of suspend the slats. I think it may be best if I go first. Take a look, you see. Huh? I'm going to go on the bridge and just do some light jumping on the slats to see how they hold. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Was anyone else going to try to check out the bridge before we go or just... 
I will do a cursory examination. Okay. I don't know, Jimmy. You're staring three dummies through the dense jungle. What do you expect? So that's a dirty <laughs> 20. Okay. And I think the other thing that Istvan would be looking for as they look at this bridge is to see if any of their smith abilities could be able to be implemented to shore up the construction of this bridge. Okay, yeah. So on that dirty 20, I will tell you that you can kind of see that this is a very old bridge that was very well constructed. And that's probably part of the reason it's still here. Can't quite tell how old, but quite old. The ropes look very sturdy. The slats, not as much. Doesn't seem like there's much you can do to really fix it. But on that dirty 20, you can tell which boards to avoid. Okay. Hold up a second. The ropes are strong, but the panels, eh, not so much. Follow my lead, and I'll mark which ones you should nay step on. And I will take out my rune carver's tools and start heading across the bridge. And all the boards that I think are dangerous, I will mark with the dwarven rune for danger and do that as I go to mark the path for those following behind me. Excellent. All right, great. So then what you're going to do is you're going to roll the checked across this bridge with advantage. Acrobatics, please. Very good. That's going to be a 21. Yeah, on the 21, you can move your full distance easily, and you can mark a few of those boards that you think that your companion should definitely not step on. All right. And that is what I do. So you made it 35 feet of this 120. Who's going next? Very well done. That there is that some sort of giant rune. Yeah, me. That's fine dwarvish, that is. They use a similar script, the same alphabet, but the words and pronunciation are far different. I should have known. Mm-hmm. Alfonso, I have a feeling this large form of mine may not fare as well as my two new friends. Perhaps you next. It would be my pleasure. All right, here we go. All right, roll acrobatics with advantage because of the runes. Uh, it's an 11. Ooh. Hmm? Yeah, on an 11, you oh, step no, no, on no, one. Oh, 12, if that matters. Oh, yeah, well, one of them creaks below your feet, but does seem to support your weight. <laughs> when you said an 11, it creaks a little, and then you say 12, it stops creaking. <laughs> <laughs> no, 11, it breaks. 12, it mm. creaks. Great. I think we found the DC, we my friends. We found the DC for the skill check. Very we nice. found it. So you, you make it your uh, full movement. 25. Who's next? I think... All right. I, I honestly think we should all... The, you and I should get off the that's, bridge before... That's yeah. what I think, too. Gordon and also, tries. not to meta this too much, but I have a lot of movement if things go sideways that I can use all at once. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to, you know, take my turn to move and dash, try and get 70 more feet across this bridge. Did you try to move 70 the first time? Move and dash? I didn't specify, but... I would say that dash, just by the nature of dashing would not have the advantage. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to continue to move cautiously then so that I can minimize the chance of failure. Cool. That does make sense. So that's going to be minimize the chance of failure. 17 and an 18 I rolled. Uh, Plus (laughs) 7, 25. Yeah, 25 gets you there for sure. You're now 70 feet onto this bridge. You're a little past the middle now. All right, yeah, coming in hot. All right. Fucking Christ. 11. Yeah. On 11, this time the board creaks and breaks below your feet, and your foot goes through. Roll a dex save. Nat 20 is 23. Yes! Oh my god, yeah. these 20s! Clutch! Ah. Yeah, yeah, on that, you're able to catch yourself and continue moving on. And because you nailed that dex save, you still get your full movement that turn. Very good. Very nice. So now you're 50 feet. You're approaching the middle of the bridge. Okay. Just as you get there, Warden, you hear some rustling behind you Uh in the trees. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know the way back to camp. (gasps) Just here. There's a light up ahead. Just let's go there. Can I try and discern which one it sounds like? It was definitely Rizian. Oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, great dragon. 
is why. I won't try and say anything, but I will try and hail and point out to Istvan and Alfonso that I'm beginning to sort of hear something and I'll point in the direction that it's coming from. I can't imagine Alfonso's doing anything other than focusing on the bridge in front of him. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Can I see if I can tell how far away they are? Yeah, roll, I guess it's perception. Sure. That's a 14. Yeah, on a 14, they're definitely not far away, and it sounds like they are seeing what you saw not too long ago. Cool. They're about halfway across the bridge. Yeah, I'm going to start as cautiously as I can. Okay. Moving across the bridge. All right, roll acrobatics with advantage. Cool. Hmm. <laughs> yep. Oh my god, these rolls! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that is a two <laughs> and a three minus one total of two <laughs> the first board you step on just immediately breaks below your feet uh, roll a deck save now cool 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 15 okay on a 15 you save and you are able to steady yourself using the ropes of this bridge and you can move so your movement is 30? Yes. I'm just grumbling to myself the whole time and trying to just... Oh. Did we not say that you should wait for us to cross? I sort of take my giant hand, like, be quiet, be quiet, pointing. Warden, roll persuasion. Oh, okay. Um, what is this game? That's another nat 20. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Nat 20. Good. Uh, a total of 26. Okay, and then Istvan, roll insight. And that's a 19. Easily enough, you can... Mine's a 23, too, by the way. I just have, like, one hand on a rope and another hand, like, pointing into the forest where there's probably rustling at this point. You pick up on that. I think that is danger the way we came from. Ah, the universal sign for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should be quick. Whatever is coming this way. May not take too kindly to us being on this bridge. May take advantage, eh? Look at these ropes. Cut it. We go up, down. Not good. Let us go. So right now we're going to enter into initiative without a cool. roll. It's going to be your order on the bridge and then the three of them in their order. So it's fun. Okay. I'm going to, at this point, if there's danger, move and dash. Just doing the flat roll. Okay. So that'll be with advantage for the first 35 and flat roll for the next 35. Okay. So, for the first 35, that is a 24. Okay. Yeah, 24 is going to do it for you. Yeah. And for my dash, an 18. 18 is also going to do it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I make it to the other side of the bridge. Yes, you do. Yep. Yeah, that's my turn. All right, I'm going to move. Okay. It's with advantage, right? Yeah, because of the runes. Thank God. That was a fucking that one. Oh, but the last bit of the bridge does not have runes on it. Am I there yet? No, you are not there. But the last bit will not have uh, advantage. 15. 15. To move the, the, the... Your acrobatics check? Yeah. That does it. Cool. It's not that hard of a DC. Uh, it's not a good idea, but I'm going to dash. It is time. Okay. Flat acrobatics roll, please. Come on, Jeppy. The way you said okay means you agree this is bad. <laughs> No, the, the, the face you're making right now says this is bad. No, the Look, face I can is hold fake. up a twenty. Also, Look at this. <laughs> it's not a twenty. It's a one. No. It's a oh, fucking shit. Bad one. Oh no! Yeah, there's there's only two reasons to oh, hold up dice. Fuck. <laughs> Alfonso, go bye bye. Oh, come on, Jib, do us dirty. Let's go. Well, no, a board cracks below your feet, and you have to make a deck save. Twelve. Twelve's gonna do it. Yeah, so you save. You don't fall any further. And you are able to pull your foot out from between this cracked board and move half of your speed this turn. So you're 87 feet now down the bridge? 87 feet. <laughs> Warden, meanwhile, oh. 30 feet into this 120-foot bridge. I sort of see this in front of me. And if a light beneath a stone helm could look worried, it does. I'm going to go ahead and take my movement. <sighs> okay, 16. That's your movement. For sure. Okay, that's my movement. I'm still behind Alfonso? Yes. How far behind Alfonso? A little less than 30 feet. Okay. And you're exactly in the middle of the bridge right now. Yeah, fuck. Oh my god. Can I look back quickly to see if they've made it out of the forest yet? You can see them. They're going to have their turn right after you, and that is when they will actually emerge from 
the trees. Okay. I would like to misty step to Alfonso. Okay. You see swirling wind and leaves as I vanish on the air and appear directly behind Alfonso, and I say, Climb on. We must make haste. Okay. So, misty step, you can move up to 30 feet? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so you moved about 25 feet then. So then you are at 85 feet. Alfonso's at 87 out of 120. And these three Kundarak agents emerge from the trees behind you. They see you immediately, and they're going to run at the bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Rizian gets there first, and he is going to take his sword. Yep. Yep. And he's going to slice one of the ropes, which requires an attack roll. So this... Do you really want to do this? You lose your prize, pointing to the warden. Yeah. Roll persuasion. Got a nice mod on this one. 19 on the dice plus 5 is 24. (laughs) Yeah, and he missed his attack. So he brings down his sword and doesn't quite connect with the rope and lets the words sink in. Damn it, he's right. After him. Hell yeah. Got him. Got him. Fucking got him. (laughs) Rizian gives the order to cross the bridge and chase after you, and the three of them begin running towards you. So they're going to roll these acrobatics checks with disadvantage. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> to be fair, they are all dwarves, and they perhaps have a possibility of seeing that I've carved oh, danger on some of the boards. <laughs> what would the DC for that be? I don't know. All right, let's see what happens. 18. You know, Rizzy and rolling an 18, I think it's actually going to help him and not the others. So Rizzy is going to roll with advantage. No, flat roll because this is their dash. Rizzy makes it 30 feet onto the bridge. Orlot stumbles all over the place. And- <laughs> doesn't make it anywhere he just completely gets stuck in the first board (laughs) oh my god (laughs) and yuli moves full movement so they're a little ways behind you and we're back up to the top with istvan anything you want to do from your safe spot here yeah actually i'm gonna take my rope off the side of my backpack it's 50 feet so i'm going to tie it to one of the anchor posts of this bridge and toss it out to warden and alfonso there, something to steady yourselves. I sort of see them begin to do this, and I simply put a hand up, like, to wait. To wait? Like, don't throw the rope yet? Oh, okay. I would still throw the rope, I think. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I have a plan, but thank you anyways. I don't know you have a plan. <laughs> yeah. Alfonso will take the rope and then look back to Warden and say, Don't worry. I have something in store for you. Are you all set? I mean, the last thing I said to Alfonso was get on. So if you're just going to ignore that, that's fine too, I guess. Um, I'll I'll get on while holding the rope. Okay. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, that's fair. That rope ain't bad. All right, so you climb onto Warden. Yeah, I'll climb onto Warden holding the rope, and I'll hold my action. Okay. I'm assuming if I'm climbing onto Warden, Warden's going to do my movement for me. Yeah, I'll call that some amount of movement to get onto Warden and object interaction to pick up the rope, and you want to hold your action. All right, cool. It's Warden's turn. Great. I didn't actually consider the actual wording of this before I came up with this plan, so just let me make sure I'm not going to get rules lawyered out of this by Scala, but I'm going to... Oh, wait a minute. They're both bonus actions. Uh Uh-oh. Can I fucking climb onto you for nothing? No, no. Hang on, Alfonso. And I will boreal sweep my way 30 feet... You see ice and snow swirl around the lower half of my form as I charge 30 feet directly towards Isfan, and then I will use my movement to go the rest of the way. Okay, so Boreal Sweep, that is a sorcerer subclass thing? It's one of the like special dashes you can use as a Prismari sorcerer. Right. And additionally, you can move across water as harmless ground, but that's yeah, not an error. So you're moving this direction straight without barely touching the ground. He's fro-zoning. Yeah. Yes. Fro-zoning. Perfect. Yeah, and then you just have five more feet to go after that 30, and it's going to be a flat acrobatics roll. Cool. <laughs> so it, it was a 19, but it was kind of cocked on the edge of the dice tray and rolled back, and that's a 1. Minus 1, 0. Okay. <laughs> You know, I I didn't put any crit fail mechanics into this game. You should have! We're over a fucking bottomless pit! You have to make a dex save, though. 
do I get any sort of benefit from the rope being there? Yeah, sure. Advantage. Okay. <coughs> Didn't matter. That's a 13. Yeah, this board cracks below your feet, and you are still able to steady yourself using the ropes of the bridge, the rope that Istvan threw you. Alfonso's there, too. <laughs> And you make this harrowing five feet. If I was going to take a stumble, I would have th- thrown Alfonso the rest of the way. <laughs> just to be I'll clear. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. I just sort of, next to Isfan, gently set Alfonso down and say, My gift from above. Thank the ancients. I take my greatsword out. Shall we? No. I put a hand on Warden's arm to stop him. And let them continue to pursue. Told you. They aren't the only children of Anatar who've lost their way. They deserve a chance to find it again. If you try to kill them, I'll stop you. Or I'll die trying. Jimmy, you said that the ropes of the bridge look extremely sturdy. In such a way that if anything were to happen to the boards, the entire bridge probably wouldn't give out. Yeah, the boards themselves are rickety and rotted, but the ropes are very well constructed. Great. I hear Isvan say this. Very well. But pursue us, they shall not. And I would like to drive my greatsword into the last 20 feet worth of boards, such that the bridge does not give out, but their way forward is blocked. Okay, yeah, go ahead and make an attack roll against this bridge. Cool. <coughs> Meanwhile, what are they talking about up there? Well, I don't know, I can't hear them. Oh shit, they're gonna cut the bridge! <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a 22. That'll do it. What is the AC for rickety planks? <laughs> yeah. The AC for the rope was 10, and it only had HP of 2. So I'm thinking that... I want each of the boards to have HP, and I want your damage to kind like of cleave as many yeah, yeah, boards yeah. as you can. Yeah. Nice, Sick. nice, I nice, like nice. it a lot. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay, here we go. Okay. 14. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to take any chances with this. I want to get as many as I can. I don't want it to be left like it looks like they could jump the rest of the way. So I'm going to dump a smite into this, all the while just sort of staring at his fun while I do this. <laughs> And that's going to be an additional nine. Okay, for a total of 23? Yes. Yeah. So you bring down your sword and just smash these boards, and the shockwave reverberates through the entire canyon, and the force is projected from board to board to board to board to board, and one at a time, they just break, 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 break. And I'm going to say about 30 feet of boards are broken. (sighs) So I held my action, I'm going to use it to just use my arcane propulsion arm and just hit whatever the last board is. <laughs> <laughs> What's the range on that arcane propulsion arm? Oh, shit. 20 feet. Never mind. Ah, uh, 20. Okay. Oh, well. Yeah. Don't do that. Actually, I will still shoot it into the nothingness and it won't reach anything. I still agree with what you did. Very nice. I give Warden a nod. A fair compromise, I think. Let's be off. You see them. They think that you're destroying the bridge. And so they're going to turn and run back in the other direction. Rizian makes it across fine. Yuli stumbles, eventually makes it back. Orlot barely even got any of the way into the bridge. And you have successfully crossed the bridge without being pursued. Very nice. Very good. Now that you've successfully made it across the bridge, you can kind of get your bearings, look around. Give me a round of perception checks. Matt won. Dirty 20. 17. Okay, yeah, those are great rolls. Well, some of them. (laughs) So you see a little ways past the bridge. You kind of come down from this bit of raised land that supports the ropes, and you see some buildings. A couple of small structures with corrugated metal roofs, small four-pane windows. They're kind of made of these faded wooden slats, rickety doors that are kind of hanging off the hinges. And you also see, in the vicinity of these buildings, a big open pit that has been excavated to reveal these glistening specks of color. And definitely Alfonso, I'll say, on that 17, you recognize that these are Eberron Dragon Shard specks. This is probably an abandoned mine. Cool. I don't really know what I would say to the party about that, if anything. Look there, perhaps, at the very least, a place for a moment's rest. Yes, friend. Oh, I didn't even notice that at all. (laughs) Perhaps staring too pensively into the ground, Master Istvan. 
Ah, uh, just trying to coil up me rope again. I work with metal, not with hemp. Your bravery. The bridge was quite admirable. We thank you. I'm humbled by your praise. I'm just trying to do right and cleanse me in our flame. So let's see what's over here then. All right. So, Warden, your estimation of this place is correct. This is a good place for a short rest. Fucking thank God. Yeah. So go ahead and do that. And while you're doing that, you find about 73 gold worth of Eberron Dragon Shard. If you want to give me an Arcana check, anybody can roll. 16. 18. Did Isvan roll? Isvan didn't get any number worth reporting back about. Okay. Got it. So then both of you would definitely know that Eberron Dragon Shards can be crushed into powder. That is what you have found here mostly inside little chunks of Eberron Shard and powder. And it can be consumed as the material component for any spell with a gold cost. You can substitute Eberron Dragon Shard for any spell component. Sick. Yeah. And those are higher rolls. I'll just generally tell you that. So you found, what did I say, 73. That is just about three full vials worth. So easy to carry when it's crushed and powdered and stuff like that. You said like there were metal roofs and I'm going to see if I can find any other sort of scrap metal that I might be able to work with around here. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and roll an investigation check. Sure. All three of you actually can roll investigation if you're looking around this place. Uh, That's going to be a 15 investigation. Five. There's a 19. Okay. Great. So on those investigation checks, you find an additional... Ooh, those are good. 164 gold worth of Eberron Dragon Shard. And what was your roll specifically, Istvan? 15. Yeah. On that 15, you can definitely find some scraps of metal. You can pull some off the roof if you want to. There's some old broken tools around, some other mundane tools. Absolutely. I gather all that shit up and throw it in my bag of holding. Nice. We're not going to put a gold value on that, but if you want to build something with metal, let's just say you found enough. Yeah, that's my thinking here is Istvan would be doing that to sort of keep their spiritual practice engaged. They've left the camp, so they've got to make do with what they find. And how much gold total now between those two? 237. That is correct. Okay. Was I the one that found it? Like, is Warden and I both rolled? I used the highest roll to determine how much you found. You can divvy it up any way you want. You're kind of all in the same place. You can roll sleight of hand if you were trying not to share it. Yeah, no, no. No, no, I want to. Okay. There is a decently valuable amount of Eberron shards here. I would like to share this with everybody. It's worth about uh, 79 gold for each of us. Huh? Would you like? And I'll hold out two hands full of Eberron shards to offer to my friends. I appreciate your generosity. That sort of magical components of no real use to me. I think an artificer like yourself could find a better application for it than a humble smith. Signore Warden? This is a noble gift. Perhaps if I were to give it a thought, there could be a bit of spellcraft. I could recall from the ancients. But for now, perhaps this one is right. Keep it for the both of us. For now. Very well. All right. So you get all rested up, get some of your stuff back. Did it seem like there was a way down deeper into this, or is this just kind of a pretty shallow? No, it's an open pit mine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Eberron shards are found near the surface, typically. Cool. Okay. So as you're doing this, hanging out, having to rest looting this place the radio in alfonso's pack makes a little sound can't quite make out it is making a sound oh un momento let me check on this i'll pull out the radio and start fidgeting with the knobs okay when you pull it out the signal gets a little bit clearer and as you fiddle please make an arcana check 18 okay yeah on an 18 you sort of by directing the antenna and fiddling with the knobs and moving it around find a little bit of a radio signal coming from a particular direction. Mm. And you hear it identify itself as... You're listening to Radio Civis, Stormreach Service. The direction seems like it's coming from... Well, you don't know what compass direction, but upriver from where you were before. Vonzo, what is that odd contraption? This is called a radio. Much in the way we look to the stars for guidance, some people look to sounds. Well, they listen, but you know what I mean. (laughs) Yeah, these sounds may give them guidance, may provide a distraction from adventure. 
It really depends on where you turn the knobs and where you walk with your radio. It is a lovely tool. And you communicate with this. Ah, we had sending stones and the like. No, 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 no. You, you simply listen. DM, is that true of radios? Is it like a radio in not Eberron? We can roll over your 18 arcana from before. Yeah, the radio is just for listening. Okay. But you would recognize sending stones. That is something that you have in modern day Eberron on Corvair. And it was derived technologically from historical findings from the giant empire. I got you. No, no, you, you simply listen to this one. You do not, uh, it is not like a sending stone. Ah, Mamma mia, how do I explain this? I... Understand. It's simple. Come, follow me. I, I'll catch a signal. You will understand soon. I'm going to walk in the direction that I need to to get a stronger signal. Okay. As you begin walking upriver along this gorge, the radio most definitely has a very clear signal. And it's playing some kind of gangster drama, it seems like. Huh. Very peculiar. You know, I mentioned sometimes the radio provides guidance. And sometimes it provides distraction. Perhaps we get a bit of both, but this seems to be an interesting tale. Care to listen, friends? We still can't see the sky from here. You actually probably could. Is this signal coming from a similar or same direction? Where the claw is pointing. Yeah. Yeah. You can see this claw of Bahamut still. You know exactly where to find it in the sky, Warden. You're very familiar with the constellations. It doesn't seem to be glowing as insistently, though, as it was before. Hmm. And it's not in the same direction, or is it? It's difficult to pin down an actual direction in this place. It's hard to tell if you're moving the same direction you were before. The constellations shift periodically. They move independently of one another. So the question you need to ask yourself right now is, do you trust Bahamut? Do you trust the radio? What do you want to do? Mm. Very well. Let us listen to the tale from your homeland. I suppose I don't have much of a choice unless I want to go for a swim. Istvan makes a gesture in the direction of the river far below them. All right, come in. Have a seat. So you are led into a dim room with a desk. Behind the desk is an older halfling, finely tailored black suit, gray slicked back hair, and standing behind him is a gruff-looking bugbear in a pinstripe suit with padded shoulders. His massive arms are crossed in front of him. Come on in, sit down, talk to the three of you. Yeah, fine. Very well. All right. All right. I'm guessing you're Brug. My friends call me Brug. Salvatore Briggs. Andy, you can go ahead and describe your character, please. So, Brug is an ogre. His suit is a little worn and a little patchy in places, and definitely doesn't fit him very well. He has a small derby on his large head and a maul that would easily be confused for a giant hammer at his side, but always... In his hand, a literal Tommy gun. And he sits down and the chair creaks under his categorically large ogre form as he grins and sits back. All right. A look at this handsome elf. Cavatappi, I assume? Yeah, that's the name. Jeppy, go ahead and describe your character. Yeah, Cavatappi is not a handsome elf. Cavatappi is one of the ugliest elves you've ever seen. Cavatappi is large in both height and waist Don's a always monochromatic suit, so I have to blend in with whatever environment he is in. Kavatapi has a suit in every color, in fact, and that is because Kavatapi knows one skill and one skill only, and that's shooting targets with his awesome sniper rifle, which he now has at his side as he sits down in the chair, nodding at the person who has just addressed him. Is it literally a sniper rifle? <laughs> literally a sniper rifle. Literally a sniper rifle with longbow stats. stats. Because this is Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. So you must be nicked. Funny, you don't match the description at all. Von Nichts. So I am very difficult to describe. They don't call me faces Von Nichts for nothing. And Von Nichts waves a hand over their face. And their appearance sort of looks like Brug. And they wave it back again. And their appearance looks like Kavatapi. And they wave it once more. And they look like the halfling that's speaking to them as they take a seat and cross their legs and air out the long beige trench coat that they're wearing and tip their wide-brimmed hat. Am I the only one who didn't bring a gun? 
terribly noisy things. Brug rolls his eyes. The boss looks at this bugbear behind him and raises a hand to you, Von Nisch, and says, Changelings, I never get tired of these guys. This is my associate, Punchy. <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> yes! Yes! Punchy puts his fist in his hand menacingly. All right, so, you're here for a job. Let me give you the rundown. Punchy? Punchy lumbers over to the door and ushers in two additional people. A dwarf with round glasses and a carefully groomed beard, tied neatly and tucked into a velvet vest. And a meek halfling, wearing a black sweater and a gold chain around his neck. These are some other associates. This is Punchy. He works for House Kundarak. He also works for me. Let's just say, Punchy knows the ins and outs of every vault in Shaw. And this is Pinchy, the getaway driver. One of the best in the biz. He can fly a sky coach like nothing you ever seen. This fucking naming convention. Yes! <laughs> I can't. Like, <laughs> yes! Can I, may I have a long rest to emotionally deal with what we've seen? <laughs> oh my god. Wait, the getaway is Pinchy, right? Yes. Perfection. Yes. Okay, we can resume. Yeah, so you got Punchy, the bodyguard, <laughs> Paunchy, the banker gone rogue, and Pinchy, the getaway driver. Ah, so I take it you intend us to do some sort of robbery? They don't call me Fingers Von Nichts for nothing. And once again, Von Nichts waves a hand in front of their face, and they take on the appearance of a very spindly-looking elf with long fingers. (laughs) You ever get tired of doing that? Nine, mein Freund. Okay. How's about we just get to the assignment, eh? We got a good crew here, I guess. But let's keep it moving. Kavatapi is just waiting to make his shot. You know what I mean? No, this one gets it. <laughs> All right. You don't like pleasantries then. That's fine with me. Let's just move on to the business then. Paunchy, take it away. All right. So we're going to steal 10,000 gold from a Kundarak vault. Trust me, it's easier than it sounds. Paunchy pushes up his glasses on his nose. So our particular target is a Kundarak vault, a gold vault. This particular facility disperses quantities of gold from account balances or bank notes. They don't keep anything incredibly valuable on premises. It's just the gold. People make deposits, withdrawals. You get the idea. We're going to steal 10,000 gold. I'll give you 100 gold up front for equipment, supplies, whatever you might need. And the boss speaks up. If you bring back 10,000 gold to me, you get 1,000 gold apiece to keep. I scratch my chin with the top of my gun. Kavitapi points to himself and then points to everybody else in the room. Yeah, you got yourself a deal, eh? At least for me. The rest of you schmucks can do what you want. And Schuldegung, they don't usually call me maths for nichts, but doing some simple arithmetic, it seems that, uh... Yeah, let's hear it. uh, What's the word I'm looking for? We are not getting a suitable cut if we are taking all of the risks ourselves. All of the risk? Who said you were taking all of the risk? No, you get a thousand each, there's five years, so that's half right off the top. I gotta pay Punchy. And, you know, we got operational costs, and then the rest gets kicked upstairs. Trust me, you're taking home more from this than I am. Can I make an insight check on that? Yeah. 19 insight. Yeah, on a 19 insight, you may have just offended him by questioning the way things get done around here. Ah, es tut mir leid. Like I said, they do not call me Mats von Nichts. Yeah, let's keep it that way. Punchy again. So you see, 10,000 gold is the maximum amount of gold covered by Kundrak insurance policies for robbery. Up to that amount, no formal investigation will be launched. That doesn't mean you won't get caught. It just means they won't come looking for you if you get away. It's not worth the investment to come find you. You get $10,000, get it back here, you're safe. The boss, again, don't kill anyone, don't reveal your identity. Oh, wait a minute, buddy. Yes? Kavatapi's going to gesture to the sniper rifle. I mean, what's the point of this here? Oh, I mean, you could use that if things go south. Ideally, we don't want to hurt anyone. Then we're looking at a whole other category of charges. But you said, uh, Kavatapi's very confused at the moment, okay? You said they wouldn't come looking for us. And now you're saying that there's more risk. You're going to up our fee or what? What are we doing here? They won't come looking for you if you just steal the money, get in, get out. If you start hurting people, then we're talking about an entirely different problem for you and for me. And when I have a problem, you have a problem too. So we're talking about two problems for you. The two of you guys are thinking too hard. It's another day at the office. Let's get going here. So, Ponchi, do you know anyone who works at this bank? At this bank, no. But this bank is not unlike many others in Sharn. Why do you ask? Well, if there's someone who has access to the vaults that we need, we could simply abscond with them 
outside of their work, and I could replace them at the job another day, on the day this heist is to take place. Ah, yes, replacement. They don't call me replacement for nichts, for nothing. <laughs> replacement is an intriguing idea. Okay, let's keep that on the table. So, the first thing you're going to see when you get there is a guard standing in front of the front door. The door's locked, the guard has the key. How are you going to get inside? I mean, we're going to shoot him. <laughs> don't you think that would cause alarm on the city street? They don't call him Alarm Von Sticks or whatever for nothing, huh? <laughs> Disable the alarms. You got to be useful for something. Disable the alarm? No, I mean just a general state of alarm caused by someone being shot in the street. And you're not supposed to shoot anyone anyway. <laughs> Shooting's the backup plan. So I expect you want me to create some sort of distraction? That's a good idea. So, what sort of con artistry shall we get into? It's simple. You do your little changeling act, and I walk up behind him and whack him over the head. As I wave the Tommy gun around in the air. <laughs> I still feel like that would cause some degree of alarm in the street if you just attacked a bank guard. Now listen, this is the easy part. It's not hard to gain access to this building as long as you have business to do inside. I wave a hand over my face. My appearance shifts to look like what was the what was the um Merrick's to <laughs> They don't call me business for niches for nothing. It's a little high profile, but I like where you're going with that. Alright. So, assuming you can get in the door, disguised as someone or other, the other two they can accompany you as security. I think that the guard would buy that. Maybe. I think the two of us would blend in just fine. Kavatapi says, holding a giant sniper rifle. <laughs> Maybe the two of you should wear the same outfit that day. That might help to sell the whole... Looking to Brug, you got any suits? Because uh, that's about all I wear, understood? Am I not dressed good enough for you? We gotta get this guy a suit. He's gonna say to the boss, I think it should be coming out of your pay, by the way. Call it operating expenses, eh? You know, we did account for operating expenses. You get a hundred gold up front to buy the equipment and supplies, the boss says. I ain't gonna argue with you no more about this. Either way, you gotta get a suit. Ain't coming out of my pay. I just sort of lean over to Fanishts and go, Did this guy not read the show notes? I mean, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> they seem to be improvising. This is very unprofessional. There were notes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once you're inside, Transactions are limited to 10 minutes, and the guard will come in from outside if it takes any longer than that. Sort of an operational security protocol. So you need to have the whole thing wrapped up in under 10 minutes. When you get inside, this is a very simple place. You're going to see a desk. Behind that desk is a teller, and behind that teller is a hallway guarded by a guard. You need to get down that hallway to the locked vault. The teller has the key. If anyone other than the teller uses the key, the door will open, but the silent alarm will be activated. I mean, how do they know it's the teller? It has an enchantment on the key. It checks the identity of the user of the key at the moment uh, the door is unlocked. I got it, I got it. What is the nature of the enchantment? Is it a simple visual sensor, or does it have other means of detecting who is opening the door? It, I believe, senses the identity. I don't believe that it is visual. So, no fooling it with my changeling trickery? Regrettably, no. Ah, shada. Look, I don't know how many of these things you guys have done, but I'm not beneath taking a hostage if it's gonna get us through the door. Hmm, that's a possibility. I think between Grug and myself, we could intimidate our way in. So, I am contented to continue to deceive and lie and otherwise befuddle the security. And we can resort to violence after that deception has failed. Hmm. What do you have in mind? If I appear as some sort of business person, then I can simply say that I wish to inspect my investments or some such fabricated nonsense. Inspect your investment? You know, it doesn't take that much to get into this place. I believe anyone with a banknote can cash out some amount of money. That ought to get you into the room, at least. Get the teller to unlock the door. And what happens next? Got it. Then we knock him out. <laughs> knock out the teller or the guard or both? The one who got us through the door. I'm not stupid. Will the guard accompany us through the door? Or will they remain outside? One guard remains outside, and there's another guard 
inside. I mean, if you want to knock the guard out. He kind of looks the three of you over. I don't think one guard would be too much of a match for you. Just don't kill him. You know, I don't like to do it, but uh, I can load this baby up with a couple of sleeper dots. You know what I mean? Knock him out. I do know what you mean. I think that's a fantastic idea. Do the old boom bop, hit him from far away. Not even a problem. Okay, my job's done. Wait, were you addressing that to me? I was addressing it to whoever's listening. Oh, okay. Okay, so you enter the bank under false pretenses, get the teller to open the vault, knock out the teller and the guard. Okay, I think that makes sense. So then we have an open bank vault door, and you need to get in and steal 10,000 gold. So we'll move on to the vault portion. Inside this vault are stacks of cases. They're labeled with their coin value and denomination. They're also the color of the coin that they contain. So you're looking for these gold cases. And then you're going to have to carry out 200 pounds worth of gold. Well, Brog, I think I see why we have brought you along. Brog shrugs. So the cases come in different denominations. You've got 500 gold cases, 1,000 gold cases, 5,000 gold cases. So... It's best to plan exactly how you're going to do this. You take the bigger denominations first, just in case anything gets lost behind. Weighs the least, in and out, not even a problem. Well, that's correct. They should call you Math Von... No, nah, they uh, call me Kavatapi. Okay. So the biggest denomination cases are 5,000 gold. Those are 100 pounds each. So if you grab two of those, you're golden. Does that sound good? The easiest math I'm going to do. I don't suppose there's uh, some sort of logistical problem presented by carrying these hundred pound cases? Getting in's one thing. How are we supposed to get out without causing a scene? That is definitely something worth considering. Be careful not to take more than 10,000. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at a whole other set of problems. Pick the cases carefully. And it's also worth mentioning, the cases will activate the silent alarm if they leave the building. So... The gold must be transferred to some other kind of container. And at that, the boss speaks up. May I suggest a bag of holding? Whatever you need to move, bag of holding is there for you. (laughs) Available wherever you buy magic items. Mm. Here, I have one right here. So the boss gives you a bag of holding. This is definitely going to make the job a lot easier. Bags of holding, use them all the time. Excellent stuff. Not even a problem. This is such an incredible convenience. Thank you. They must be so very affordable. So affordable. Isn't that why they call you Affordable Von Niche? Because you use them bags of holding all the time? They call you Deals Von Niche. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. My apologies. God damn it. (laughs) And that's why they call them Bags of Holden Von Niche. Precisely. Not even a problem. And I wave my hand over my face and look like Kevin (laughs) Tappy. Makes a lot of jobs a lot easier. What else are you got to say about it? Not even a problem. So, that settles that, I think. (laughs) Get the 10,000 gold into the bag of holding. (laughs) And if you can do the whole thing in under 10 minutes, and without making too much noise, you should be able to just walk out the front door. Well, they don't call me no noise for niches for nothing. (laughs) I lean over to Kawatapi. (laughs) No, no, I don't don't do that. I don't do that. (laughs) No, I do. Man, they're improv an awful lot. Yeah, I took a class with them at one point. They're pretty good, though. It's a bit much for me, but they're pretty good. <laughs> I like that because it was either one of two things. These radio performers are improvising the whole thing, or this is actually what someone wrote. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so once you're outside, I think that is the point where you will signal... Pinchy. Pinchy kind of looks up. His body language suggests he's very uncomfortable here. He is a little guy. He's a halfling, but he's also just skinny and looks a little sickly. And he looks up and makes half eye contact with Paunchy when he gestures to Pinchy and then kind of looks back down. The best, this guy. Pinchy. Never seen anyone drive like that. Amazing. Pinchy nods. Can I roll insight on Pinchy? Something seems fishy here. Yeah, go ahead. 16. Yeah, on a 16, Pinchy looks very uncomfortable. You don't know what's going on with this guy. You meet a lot of weird, strange, colorful characters working in organized crime, but Pinchy, he's not handling himself well in this situation. I put a hand on Pinchy. Mm. He jumps. He was not expecting that, and he is horrified. Be calm, be calm, my friend. You seem very nervous. I am certain that you are very proficient behind the wheel, but... It feels like there's something that you want to say to us, something that is causing you this angst. Pinchy doesn't talk too much. I don't have anything to say. I just drive. It's all we need you for, really, friend. All right. 
Your name's Pinchy because you get us out of the pinch. I get it. We don't need to overthink it. All right? Looking over to Von Nitsch. One thing, though. What's the signal? How will I know when to pull up? We're going to wave that bag of holding right up real high. You'll be able to see it. They're very visible when you need them to be. <laughs> this is Ponchy again. You're going to wave the bag of gold that you just stole from the bank? I think that looks a bit suspicious, don't you think? No, nah, because they'd never expect it. Who's going to be waving a bag of gold using a bag of holding outside a bank they just robbed? Nobody. <laughs> that can't be it! What the hell? I can't let waving the bag of holding in the air go. That's not what we're gonna do. After Kamatapi says that, Von Nisch's actor leans into him. The plug bit is over. Get back on script. You have a problem with the bag of holding plan, Brug? Can't we just park the getaway close enough to see us come out of the building? I know we got a changeling here, but the muscle, you know, it's not like we're gonna not be able to be seen from... Down the block. You couldn't change into the bag of holding, could you? Be a distraction? Enough with the bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> Pinchy, what do you think of that plan? Do you think you could park somewhere where you can have a clear view of the front door? I mean, I, I could try. Sure. All right, so is everyone okay with this plan? Yavol. Another day at the office. Not even a problem. <laughs> Love it. So many problems. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> so as you're listening to this radio show, you start to feel raindrops. If anyone deserves to be robbed from, that's House Kundarak. And these uh, radio dramas, uh, are they depicting past events? Well, some of them may, but uh, not always. This one was... Uh, it was very easy to follow, for the most part. But I do not think it ever really happened. I think this is just for fun. Sort of a flight of fantasy. See, but listening to that radio show somehow made me very grateful that we still have our bags of holding, eh? Huh? They did continue to bring that up many times. A very nice show. This half hour of radio was brought to you by Bag of Holding. <laughs> Bag of Holding, available in every major metropolis. But Bag of Holding aside, eh, it looks to be raining now. I'd love to hear whatever comes next on the radio, but uh, I think it's best to go back in the bag, eh? I'll put the radio back in my bag and I guess we'll suss out maybe a nature check to see like how bad it's going to start raining. Yeah, absolutely. As Alfonso does that, I'll look around and see if we can see any new major landmarks and maybe make a nature check about this rain. I suppose I could roll nature as well. I'm not a dumb dumb. 13. 15. I lied. I am a dumb dumb. That's a six. Okay. So, yeah, 15 is a great DC that you just hit there. You can tell this is going to be a really intense storm. Uh-oh. It's going to be a bad one. And you're kind of looking for more landmarks. You're still walking along this gorge, which is not as deep in this area. It's still kind of a steep riverbank, but it's not a big drop down to the water like it was before. You've kind of walked downhill a ways. Let's see. I have seen the weather turn and the heavens open down upon this earth very quickly before we must try and find a means to evade the coming storm. And at that, there's a flash of lightning, and a little while later you hear thunder rolling in the distance. Let's roll initiative. Nat 20. Jesus. Dirty 20. 18. Initiative 23. Jesus. What did the thunder roll? <laughs> no! Oh From my Garth god! Brooks, baby, right? Is it Garth Holy Brooks? Holy shit! If we get the rights. And the thunder rolled and lightning We did not get the rights, as it turns out. Andy actually sang the whole song there, but we had to take it out. Yeah. Because of a DMCA oh, takedown request. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so each round during your turn, you are going to look for shelter from the storm. That's going to be a survival skill check. On your turn, you can use your action in any way you want to attempt a skill check with a proficient skill or, or do whatever else you want to do with it. And if that skill check meets or exceeds the DC, you can roll that survival check with advantage for that round. All right, Alfonso, you're up first. 
I'm going to keep it simple and just roll nature to see if there's like some sort of covering. Okay. 11. 11 does it on this first round. So go ahead and roll your survival check with advantage. You think you see an area where you can kind of get under some trees and not feel the rain quite as hard. 12. Yeah, you can get under these trees, and so the rain's not pelting you. Cool. It's fun. I noticed that we've gotten a lot closer to the river, and I'm worried about it rising. So I'm going to see if I can go to my typical tactic of climbing up into a tree and trying to get elevated so I don't get caught in any sort of flood. Okay, so let's make that an acrobatics check. 22. Yeah, 22 is going to do it. Roll survival with advantage. Okay. A four and a four. A seven total. Okay. Oh, man. I get into a tree that's about to fall the fuck over. Yeah, on that seven, you climb up. The tree is looking rickety. It's going to probably blow over in the wind, and there's still a bit of opening above you. This is not really a defensible position. Lightning flashes in the distance. Warden. Seeing Istvan try and go for a tree, I'm going to try and use athletics to find perhaps a larger, sturdier one, but climb to higher ground. All right, so you're also climbing a tree and you're using your strength to do it. Athletics. 14. Yeah, 14 passes this extremely easy early game DC and roll survival with advantage. Cool. 18. Okay, 18. Yeah, you find a place that feels very safe for right now. Mm, This will do. Istvan, you must find higher ground teetering on the branch in the wind i don't think it's the height that's the issue safer i said safer so the rain is really starting to come down now it's not just drizzling it's actually raining now Uh, and we're with alfonso all right this might be more investigation and it might even just be nature again I was going to try for history okay. to look around the ground and see if there are spots where there seems to be less spots where water will consistently go, like rocks will change color and erode to time. Or something like that, you know? That is a million percent a nature roll. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Can I just roll nature with a mod of eight, even though it's five, so that it's like rolling history? No. Nope. Okay. You can do something with history, but you can't do what you just said. <laughs> I would like to read a history book, and it tells me where to go. <laughs> <laughs> do you expect anything less at this point? I'll roll nature again. All right, this is a 16. Yeah, 16 does it. All right, now we'll do our survival with my mod of one. Well equipped for this one. Okay, it's a three. Wait, with advantage? Oh, I got advantage? Yeah, because you passed the check. There's a different story. It's a dirty 20. Okay, dirty 20. You get to a place one less than my perfect roll, so... Yeah, you feel really good about this little spot that you found. With my history book. No, not with your history. (laughs) Anyway, Istvan. So, teetering on top of this clearly unstable tree, I want to look around and... Do I see any stones that perhaps I could hide behind? Perhaps with my stone cunning, I could identify a good hidey rock to crawl under. Yeah, sure. So you're going to make that a history check? Yes. Okay. That's ridiculous for me to let you do that after I just... <laughs> it doesn't matter. Go. It's ridiculous and amazing. I'm here it's for it. It's part of the reason I proposed it. And I want to inflect upon this because that's a natural 20. Oh, a nat 20. Insane. For a total of 28. 28? Yes. Isfan dwarfs their way out of this minigame. Okay. Okay. Watch me bomb this survival check. Okay, okay, it's fine. With advantage, that's a 22. Yeah, you find this, it's like a rock formation that you you can kind of climb up a few rocks and then into this cave, and so you're kind of a ways above the ground, but also sheltered by rock. Yeah, I crawl into this little crevice. Warden, you're at an 18. Mm Mm-hmm. I am passing. Yeah, Warden's passing. Warden's going to stick at this 18 here. And the three of you are fairly safe where you are. Alfonso, you're going to stay at that 20 as the thunder and lightning are continuing to boom around you? I'm not going to bank on rolling a nat 20 against a dirty 20 with a mod of 1. Okay. Yeah, and then Isban, I'm assuming you're also staying in the same spot? Aye. Okay. Warden, now there's thunder and lightning going on. You can see that from where you are. It's a very, very frightening. Me? <laughs> and on those nature checks from earlier where you both rolled a 15, you know this storm's going to be really bad. 
I will stay for now. Okay, stay for now. The rain is really coming down now, really, really heavy rain. It's crashing through this canopy of leaves. It's starting to pool these shallow puddles all around. And I'm going to ask again, you all staying where you are? I'm not leaving the embrace of Onathar's blessed stone. I'm not moving. Or does it seem like I am approaching any sort of danger at all from my vantage? From your vantage, you're really getting the full force of this storm. Feet away from you are these torrential rains and the thunder shakes the very thing that you're in. And the lightning lights up everything around you. You're like very much in this storm and you're feeling it from where you are. Very cool. Yeah, I, man, it, it takes a lot for me to do better than this. So I'm just gonna gonna hold on and hold. Hope for the best. Okay. You hear some rumbling coming from upstream, the direction that the river is flowing from. Does that prompt anyone to do anything? I'll try and look to see if I can see what it is. Nope, that's a four. Yeah, on a four, you didn't even hear it. There's so much thunder and the yeah. sound of rain. You don't even know what that was. Yeah, but on the next round, we get this surge of water. The river is now racing, raging feet higher than it was before and much wider, too. It's making its way up this steep embankment. It comes very close to you, Warden, but it doesn't quite touch you. Yeah, fuck off, water. Okay. Now, at this point, you've got branches from trees blowing off. They're being carried down the river. There's these big rocks and all kinds of different detritus being just carried by this river and this water looks angry and it's really rising up and it's very very close to you warden for the fourth movement of beethoven six yeah see i had the back half of alpine symphony but mm. and who wouldn't really that's based off of i mean they're the same material. i'm gonna try and roll nature to see if i can find anywhere that might be higher than where i am now that i don't necessarily have to physically get to I clutch my dragon shard and consider using either Misty Step or other means to try and magically get to uh, another location. If you want to use Misty Step, I'll automatically give you advantage on survival check, but you got to use a survival check to make your number higher. So I have to roll survival no matter what. That's the game. That's the game. Okay, <sighs> okay I'm going to do it. Okay. Burn two sorcery points second level spell. Here I go! <laughs> Same roll. 18. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I misty step, but I misty step to a place that is exactly the same <laughs> level. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Dragons above. <laughs> At this point, trees are being uprooted by the wind and the water being pulled. The river has escaped its banks and is turning into flood waters, and it's pulling in all directions, and giant rocks and boulders crashing around, and you're getting a little wet here, but nothing catastrophic is happening. That's that. You want to try anything? Wait, did we pass? Are we safe? You're safe. Warden is getting wet. Mm. Yeah, I guess I'm going to try and do what I was going to do before. I'm going to roll nature, see if I can do any better. <clears throat> Probably not. That's a 10. 10 does not meet the DC, so survival will be not with advantage. <clears throat> That is a 12. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, the waters have caught up to you. And so the land around you is being reshaped. The river is actually changing course. It's wild what's happening. Entire trees are flying around in the gale force winds. And you must make a strength saving throw, please. Cool. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That is a nine. Ooh, yeah, that's not going to do it. You get washed away in this water. So now you are being tumbled along with all these other rocks, you among them, in these floodwaters. It's just repeated Skyrim uh, sounds. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, that's right. Like, <laughs> uh, 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 like. <laughs> yes. Horrible. Okay. So, you get washed by this river. Isman and Alfonso, you can kind of see this happen, because you weren't that far from where he was. And you can see, among these rocks being washed in the river, you see a green glimmer and a sword. How far away from Warden am I? You can get there fairly easily with your monk speed. Would it be far enough away that I could throw him my rope? If you use your full movement and throw out your survival check, you can throw the rope 
happen to him. Istvan wants to die an honorable death. They do this. All right. I think we need to help our friend. He is in trouble. Save yourselves, friends. If I have to shipwreck my survival throw, I'll do what I can to throw a guidance Andy's way. What's the range on guidance? Touch, I believe. Yep. Oh, is it? Yeah. Then, yeah, you do have to shipwreck your survival. If that was your terminology. That is the official terminology, yeah. Okay, so you both shipwrecked survival checks oh in order God. to rescue your friend. Friendship. <laughs> That's friendship. <laughs> That's friendship. We went into this campaign friends. It was a quick oh. journey. That's what we're doing. That's great. Uh, it's a Theros the nine whole campaign. games to get to friends. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking Ravnica, they aren't even friends yet. <laughs> Well, Illipel says they're friends with everyone, but, uh... That's... I'm talking about Clork. Clork's the manager. That's not Clork's voice. We can... That's close enough. <laughs> this is a friends versus nature kind of game. All right, so... So, Andy, you are now in the river. You are getting pulled, you're bumping along these rocks, and you have to make an athletics check to swim and kind of get your bearings with the current. Do it with advantage, because there is a rope that you can grasp for. Okay. And guidance. And guidance. And a default. If he's given the guidance to me, he has to jump in the river to do it. That's a great point. Yeah, you're not doing guidance. Jeffy, what did you want to do with your turn? So here's a question. Can the guidance be delivered through the arm? Oh. That's what I'm saying. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Rocket hand high five guidance. It's got it. Come on. Come on. Okay, here's the deciding question then. Would guidance be able to be delivered through mage hand? Mm. I don't think you can use Mage Hand to do touch spells. It can do things for Arcane Trickster. They're on opposing spell lists, right? None of the spell lists that have Guidance have Mage Hand. Is that right? Yeah, because they're Arcane versus Divine spells. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. You can use High Five Rocket Hand Guidance. You have to let it happen. You're the DM. It's rule of cool, I agree, but it is such an egregious bending of the rules. I would make it a high Arcana check DC, but that's just my good. For who, me? To cast it? You know, I'm gonna... Yes, because your arm is a person. Go ahead. I, I rolled a 16 arcana. I think that'll do it. So yes, take guidance on that as well. So with advantage and guidance, you roll athletics. Here we go, Luciano. That's right. Damn. Say hello to my brother, huh? He come here to help you. The d4 was a 4, so... Very cool, very cool, very cool. That is a 29. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> and that's on the power of friendship. You... Now do have all the strength of a great typhoon. <laughs> yeah, so Luciano grabs the end of this rope and delivers it directly into your hands. Hell yeah. As you swim with one hand and pull yourself with this rope with the other. And Luciano flies back to Alfonso, gives kind of a thumbs up, then reattaches himself. <laughs> oh my God. Beautiful. And you are now out of the water. And let's have another round of survival checks. My survival check is a nat 20, thank you. That's great. My survival check is a 14. Rolled a 19 again with my plus one mod, plus three, so there's a total of 23. Okay. Alfonso got to safety. Warden got to safety. Istvan did not. Uh-oh. Istvan. That's what I get for throwing a rope. <laughs> Istvan, please roll deck save and a con save. Deck save and a con save. All right. I'll begin with my best one. So this is a deck save. Roll the two, so that's a nine. <laughs> oh, no! Con save. That's a dirty 20. Okay, con save passed, the deck save failed, and you take eight lightning damage. Ah! Carrying too much metal! Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Next round, Alfonso, you're up first. You want to shipwreck your location again to help Istvan. How far away is Istvan? Near enough to help, but you need to give up your location. Even with my propulsion arm? I think so. It has to do with seeing and... Enough bricks have been shattered this evening. I will remain in place for now. Cold. I know. I literally can't get a better roll. <laughs> so now it is this monster. Okay. So if there's all of these projectiles and obstacles and lightning bolts trying to hit me, could I potentially spend a key point and use patient defense and try and... I know that makes attack rolls against me have disadvantage, but because this is like an abstract skill thing, could I use it to try to avoid some of this debris and stuff that's flying around? I think that's fair. Yes. Then that is what I will do. Okay. Go ahead and re-roll your survival. 
Okay. Is this a flat roll? I'm going to say since you spent a resource this round, take advantage. Okay. That's what I wanted to make sure of. Yeah. Okay, so it's an 18. Okay. Probably still not good enough. 18's right on the cusp. No, not quite good enough. But I will give you advantage on both dex and con save this turn. Okay. Dex save. Nat 20. Nice. 27 total. Uh Uh-huh. Pass. And con save... Another nat 20. Okay. This dwarf die. These fucking dice rolls this game have been insane. The dwarf yeah. die knows I'm a dwarf. 25. You pass both of those. Oh, weird. So you're out there just dodging lightning, and when the thunder hits, you kind of jump up into the air. If you want to put any extra color and flavor. Yeah, you again see this warm orange aura extend around all of this Khan's limbs. They strike a very balanced pose. They mutter to themselves, Sacred color technique. Dance of the cooling embers. And they move very gracefully around all of these dangers. Nice. Very cool. All right. Next round. Warden, you can hear that the time between lightning and thunder is starting to get a little longer. The rain might be letting up a little. The floodwaters are still very much present, but they're not as angry as they previously were. The wind has died down a bit. Hang on, Histvon. The storm may yet pass. Would I have to give up my current role if I simply wanted to hold my help action for Istvan? No. You could stay where you are and then use your reaction at any point to give up your location. Cool. I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm going to sort of brace myself where I am, prepared to... Act as a big rock, and if need be, provide some sturdiness. Okay. But otherwise pass. That's Alfonso. Isfan's out there dodging lightning, glowing. Sensing that the storm is dying down, we're going to do the friendship thing, and I'm going to go out, shitbrick my survival, and punch a, a guidance into the air with Luciano. All right, so Alfonso, you can now roll survival with advantage. Wait, survival? Before I give the help action? You went out, you're using the help action, and just you being there with your friend, the power of friendship, gives you advantage. Okay. As you give the help action to Istvan, you both get advantage. Cool. 13. Very glad I did this. Fuck. (laughs) All right. That's why I stayed where I was. It just felt wrong. You need to now roll. Roll just a dex save, please. 22 total. And lightning hits right near you, but does not hit you. No, 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 not today. No damage taken. Istvan. Okay. Can't get any more advantage than this, so. You cannot. All right, dirty 20 is what I have. Dirty 20 is nice, so you found a good spot there. I'm going to follow Luciano back to where Alfonso is, seeing that they've come out. I'm going to perch on a tree above them, and on my next round, see if I can maybe help them up to some safer ground. Okay, so using the help action again in turn. Yes. Good. Warden. Stay in put. Stay in put. Alfonso. Okay. Gonna, you know, find a spot nearby that is close enough to Istvan where they can help me. Oh, I'm also gonna cast guidance on myself. BT dubs. Okay. Okay. Dirty 20. All in. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So now at this point where all three of you are in pretty safe positions away from floodwaters, away from thunder and lightning and wind and every different hazard that a storm offers you stay in this place and watch the storm continue through the night it eventually stops before sunrise as the hot equatorial sun rises and morning light reflects off the puddles a thick haze rises you meet with a mysterious figure let's say in a dark alley it's the only place to do such a thing. Yes, the designated meeting spot. And so there are two men wearing trench coats. One steps out of the shadows. The other one smokes a cigarette mysteriously. And the one who steps forward says, So Van Nish, what do you got for us? It's going to be a bank hit. A bank hit? That's all? Yeah. There's a very elaborate plan. Elaborate? But I think that the wheels of this machine, if I remove but one pin, they will fall down. You see, there is a very specific amount of gold that my associates are looking to make off with. And it is an amount that is insured by the house Kondrak. And if money in excess of this amount is taken, then it will increase the class of the crime so that perhaps you could pursue them with a greater reach of your authority. I see. 
I don't suppose you could spare me a light, I say to the guy who has a cigarette. <laughs> he doesn't respond. How rude. He just watches. And the guy talking to you takes a lighter out of his coat. Von Nichts holds up a cigarette for him to light. Allow me. Dankeschön. So, do you think this is acceptable? Or is there more you want from me? Hmm. So you steal more than 10,000 gold. And that gives us license to go after the boss. That is my understanding. But I am no expert on the law. That is your department. You'd be surprised. To suggest that fine, upstanding agents like yourselves work outside the law? Absolutely preposterous. There's a lot you don't know. Yes, I think this will work quite nicely. Just one thing, Von Nisch, make sure you get away. Ah, well, so don't call me Slippery Von Snitch for nothing. <sighs> and I change my face to look like the boss, and I give a wink, and I turn around, and I walk. Pod to the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato, that's me, and edited by Scalo, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Thanks to our Patreon supporters, and a special thanks to our Holy Avengers, May, Jake, Chris, and John. For $5 a month on our Patreon, you can access every episode of Table Talk, our post-game recap show. Those Table Talks are a lot of fun, and you should totally do that. And besides, every contribution you make helps us weather the storm <laughs> of this podcasting industry. It's very difficult. Yeah, it's so hard. Coming up with puns like this on a weekly basis is grueling work, and your low contributions every week help. Month? Every month help. Month. How long have you had that in your pocket, Jeffy? Don't lie. Three minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did, it, did it seem like it was thought, thoughtful at all? Because I hope it wasn't. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.